uh, channel, and we'd like to welcome you this morning to Lansing Christian Center Church. I'm Associate Minister Andrew Ellison, and our physical location is at 5640 South Waverly Road in Lansing, Michigan. Our mailing address is Post Office Box 27413, Lansing, Michigan 48909. We have a prayer team that meets the first and third Friday of each month at noon. If you are in need of someone to pray with you or for you, call 517-646-8077 at noon time, um, Eastern Standard Time, during that hour of prayer. There will be someone to take your prayer request and pass it on to the prayer team, team excuse me, who will pray with you according to James 5 and 16. The effective, fervent prayer of righteous men avails much, and we thank you for um, ministering with us or being a part of our ministry with us. You can also um, further review uh, messages in the past and find out about events or activities or our calendar um, here at Lansing Christian Center Church at lansingchristiancenterchurch.org, lansingchristiancenterchurch.org. Amen. Glory to God. It's a privilege. It's an honor. It's always a great thrill for me to stand before the people of God and to this body of believers whom I've been a part of for many years, uh, not quite as long as Sister Maddie, but um, bumping, bumping up on 40 myself, praise God. So I thank God for that uh, privilege of being under this ministry. Sometimes people ask me or ask Tori and I when they find, they, people ask, um, where, where do you go to church? And I say, I go to Lansing Christian Center Church. And I say, they say, where is that? And I say, it's in Lansing. And <laughs> praise God. Um, they, where do you live down there? I says, no, I live in Elma, um, which is about 50 miles away. And you go to church in Lansing? Yes, I do. Amen. Amen. And I don't travel the farthest. I think Brandon travels a little bit farther than I do. Amen. But when God has placed you somewhere, when God has planted something in you and planted you somewhere, you need to obey him and stay where he plants you until he moves you somewhere else. Amen. Amen. Um, there's too many church members that are on roller skates. Amen. Yep, I said it. I'm not going to take it back. You just roll over here and you sit for a minute and then you roll over here and you sit for a minute. You don't never get planted and nothing gets planted in you. Amen. Nothing it takes root in you. Praise God. So we need, to, we need to be diligent in the things of God and be obedient to him. Amen. I would like you to open your Bibles, please, with me to Psalm, the 37th number of the Psalm, Psalm 37. Amen. A few uh, mornings ago, um, don't remember exactly which day, but a few mornings ago, I just woke up with um, the first couple words of this particular Psalm. Um, fret not, fret not, and that's where we're going to begin. That may or may not be the title. I might get a title by the time we get done, but praise God, <laughs> we're going we're gonna to start there nevertheless. And I knew where that psalm, where that phrase was. I knew where it was in Scripture. So when I got up and got around, I went and grabbed uh, my Bible and um, began to look at this passage of Scripture. Now, when I went to grab a Bible, I grabbed this Bible that I have with me this morning, which is one of my older study Bibles that I've had for some time. And this particular Bible um, was damaged, water damaged, during the fire that we had a few years ago. And Tori will attest to you that one of the things that I told the recovery people is, I want this Bible. If you don't save nothing else that you uh, recover out of this house, I want this Bible. And so they took it and they restored it as best they could. It's a little bit wrinkled, but it was, it was, it was soggy. It was just, and I said, man, but they, they saved it, praise God. And so when I went to grab the Bible, I, for after um, being impressed with the, the, the phrase or the words fret not, I went to this Bible. And when I went in this Bible, and you can't see it really, really well, but the 37th Psalm is right in here. And there's some things that are highlighted in here and I realized that when I had um, studied that or read this passage before in this Bible, there were some things that stood out to me. And so as I looked at them, I says, man, you know, there's something here. And then the Spirit of the Lord said to me, pay attention. 
He said, pay attention. So I went back, and I went back through here, and I, I some things that he had previously hired. I didn't have any notes on it that I was aware of. So he kind of refreshed me or renewed me or retaught me or re um, gave me additional revelation in these things that he had at, at one time pointed out to me. And so um, one of the things that's written in the margin here in my Bible right next to fret not is this phrase, don't get heated up. <laughs> and so I went back and I looked up the word fret, and sure enough, to fret here in the Hebrew that it's written, it means to heat up. It means to heat up. And so the Spirit of the Lord had said to me, don't get heated up. And again, he had said, pay attention. And I was just thinking, and I'm not going to go into a whole, whole, whole bunch of stuff, but there have been circumstances and situations um, um, at work and in uh, family things that have had the, the given me the opportunity to get heated up. Amen. I know you stay just as calm and as cool. People cut you off in traffic and you just bless them in the name of Jesus. Amen. You don't tap the horn or the steering wheel. Amen. You don't get heated up. But he says here, let's just read these, these verses real quick here. Fret not thyself because of evildoers, neither be thou envious against the workers of iniquity. For they shall soon be cut down like the grass and wither as the green herb. Trust in the Lord and do good, so shalt thou dwell in the land, and verily thou shalt be fed. Delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. Commit thy way unto the Lord, trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. And he shall bring forth thy righteousness as the light, and thy judgment as the noonday. Rest in the Lord, and wait patiently for him. Fret not thyself because of him who prospers in his way, because of the man who brings wicked devices to pass. Cease from anger and forsake wrath. Fret not thyself in any wise to do evil. Amen. Those, those are good instructions, aren't they? This, this particular psalm is a psalm of David, uh, apparently written or inspired through David um, by, the, by, by the Holy Spirit through David. And this is written in the, the wisdom type um, vernacular. You'll find the same type of uh, language or the same type of speaking in the book of Proverbs in many places. And also a, a book of good instruction. But in this wisdom uh, that David relays here, he says to fret not, don't be envious. And there are three times that he says this in this psalm to fret not, to don't get heated up, all right? And then this psalm, that is an admonition against something, not to do something. And then he tells us in the positive or instruction toward to trust and to dwell. He tells us also to delight. That's an instruction to something. He also tells us to commit and to trust. That's an instruction to something. He also tells us to rest and wait. That's an instruction to something. And then he also gives us another admonition against, which is to cease and forsake. So there are at least three times that fret not is used. And then there are two places in these eight verses or so where there are admonitions against something and their instructions or encouragement towards some things. Amen. And so, again, to fret not is to not be heated up. To trust is to be confident to be bold, to be secure. And I'm just um, using these things that were highlighted in my scripture that were in, the, in my Bible, rather, that kind of, if you will, jumped out to me. You ever read something and something stands out to you? That's when I highlight, when something stands out to me. And so trust, to be confident, to be bold, to be secure. And then this word, delight thyself in the Lord. The word delight there means to be soft or to be pliable. To be soft or to be pliable. Now, it, it, we've, we've taken the connotation to that to mean that if I just do what God says to do, then he will give me whatever I want. That's the way a lot of people read that verse. I'll read it to you, and you can, if, I'm, if I'm lying, I'm flying. Delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thy heart. So when, you, when the Lord is your delight, then God will give you what you want. That's the way people 
um, interpret or understand that verse. But the, word, the verse is saying to me, and it said to me, that to be soft and to be pliable is to allow my heart to be receptive to what God's desires are for me. And when you let yourself be soft and pliable and open and receptive to the Lord's activity in your life, he will give you, in other words, he will plant within you the desires of your heart. If you delight yourself in the Lord, he'll give you what you're supposed to want. Somebody missed that. See, it's not about just what I want. Gimme, gimme, my name is Jimmy. Amen. It's about my heart being pliable and soft so that God can place within me what he wants for me. And then what he wants for me becomes what I want for me. Huh? Isn't that a good place to be in? When your desires line up with what God's desires are because you've allowed yourself to be open before him for him to plant or place within you what he wants for you. That makes you eligible then for 1 John 5 and 14, I think, through 16. It says that if we ask anything according to his will, then he hears us. There's a prerequisite there, asking according to his will. Well, how do I know what his will is? When I delight myself in him, he puts his will, his desires in me, so then what I want is what he wants. Or what he wants becomes what I want. So if I, if I ask anything according to his will, or if I ask anything according to his desires, has anybody ever taken the time to stop and say, God, what do you want? I know I'd like a big house. I know I'd like a new car. I know I'd like a new suit. I know I'd like some new shoes. God, what do you want? Lord, I know I'd like this person or that person to get some act right. What do you want? Come on, somebody. You ain't never, don't, don't, don't sit here and look at me blinking your eyes like, no, I don't know what you're talking about. You know you have prayed for God to get some people, to make some people act right. You know you prayed to ask God, Lord, get them straight because they are so messed up. They really messing with me. But, Lord, what is your desire concerning this person? What is your desire, your will, your will in their lives, your kingdom come, your will be done in their lives? That's my delight and that's my desire. Not strike them down. Not send the tornado to their house. Not let their ride break down so they'll be walking so they understand what it was like. <laughs> Aren't you glad that I'm not God? <laughs> Aren't you glad that some people that you know aren't God? We'd be in a mess. We'd be hurting. For certain we'd be hurting if some people were in the top seat. Amen. But we want to be delighted in the Lord, soft and pliable. And then the other, one of the other words that, he, he, that stood out to me was this word commit. Commit your way unto the Lord and trust also in him. This word commit here means to roll. It means to roll over onto. So when he says commit, he says to roll over your way. Roll your way over unto the Lord. See, the, the, in these verses, he's telling us to align ourselves with God's desires for us, to understand what those desires are, and allow, our, allow God to plant his desires in us. I heard um, 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 Bishop Butler give his testimony um, once, at least one time, but I heard him give his testimony about the founding of the Word of Faith ministry, which is uh, nationwide and has many congregations planted all over. And he comes from a lineage of the background of um, a preacher's kid. His father was a pastor. And so as he knew he was called into the ministry and that he was going to pastor, his initial praying was that he wanted to at least have a church membership that exceeded what his father was able to do in his ministry, which was around 500, okay? And so by that, he never had a vision for what word of faith has ultimately become. 
But he would come home, and him and his sister Deborah lived in a small one-room apartment, and they had a dining room table. And he would go, that was his prayer place, and he would go and get under that dining room table, and he would pray. And he was praying about what God was birthing in him, which is now word of faith. And he said he would pray, and he would pray, and he would pray. And this is the way he said it, and I love this. He said, I stayed under that table praying until Jesus got under that table with me. (laughs) Amen. He stayed before the Lord. Not necessarily trying to get anything out of God, but until the vision and the plan that God, the desires that God had for him were implanted in his heart. Amen? Until God gives you what to say. We've heard our own pastor give the testimony so many times about the, uh, the events and the activities that happened some years ago when they were on the cruise. He was minding his own business, so to speak, but fellowshipping with the Lord. And the Lord put in him what to say and what to pray. He didn't think it up on his own. God put in him. He was delighting himself in the Lord, fellowshipping in the Lord, and the Lord gave him. The Lord gave him the desire of his heart, gave him what to say, what to pray, to um, send the angel before you and make your way possible for you to get home. That came from heaven. That came from a desire given and put it in his heart by the Holy Ghost. So when the scripture here says to roll, he says to roll your way. Turn over to um, um, Psalm, Psalm 16, Proverbs 16. I'm sorry, Proverbs 16. Now, again, I said just a second ago that these, this particular psalm is kind of written in this, um, in this uh, wisdom teaching type of way that many of the Proverbs are written in. And in Proverbs chapter 16, it says the preparations of the heart in a man and the answer of the tongue is from the Lord. All the ways of man are clean in his own eyes, but the Lord weighs the spirits. Verse 3, commit thy works unto the Lord and thy thoughts shall be established. That, word, that verse in another translation says, roll your works over unto the Lord and he will cause your thoughts to be established and your plans to succeed. When you roll it over to the Lord, when you commit it to him, he causes your thoughts to be established and then your plans will succeed because he's caused your thoughts to be established because you put it before him for him to give you the desires of your heart. Am I helping anybody this morning? Amen. And so then the last one, and then also we, we find in, also in, uh, in the New Testament, the New Testament parallel for that verse there and these verses here is in 1 Peter 5. Humble yourself um, under the mighty hand of God that he might exalt you in due season. And he says to cast all your cares, roll the weight of your cares. Throw, in, in, in the New Testament, he says cast, cast them on the Lord. Get them off of you and get them to him. Amen. I heard somebody else um, talking or preaching earlier this week, and they said that one of the reasons why Christians are not more successful in prayer or as successful in prayer as they should be because they're always praying the problem instead of praying the answer. See, when you delight yourself in the Lord, he'll give you the answers that you need. And then instead of praying the problem, you'll be praying the answer. And when you pray the answer, you know that he's heard you and you know that you have the petition that you desired of him because he gave you what to pray in the first place. You can waste a whole lot of time in prayer. Waste a lot of time in prayer. Just um, speaking out into the air and just... I don't, I, if I hurt your feelings, YouTube, forgive me. But you can quit speaking to the atmosphere, baby. The atmosphere didn't save me. The atmosphere doesn't fill me. The atmosphere doesn't nurture me and nourish me. It is Jehovah God, Jesus, the Lord God Almighty, who is I'm talking to who I'm speaking to, my Father who is in heaven. See, I'm a part of the family. I'm a part of the family. 
and my father owns the whole shebang. Glory to God. He turned around and gave it to his firstborn son and then made me an heir and a joint heir with that son. So everything that the son gets or got, come on, pastor finished it. The rest of y'all scared. Is mine. I'm an heir and a joint heir. If Jesus has got it, it's my, I'm, I have a part in it. I've got a share in it. Glory be to Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. So to rest again is to be silent. We're back in Psalm 37. To rest is to be silent, to be still, to wait, to be dumb. Now, I know we like to talk, and I, I know we like to, again, speak to the atmosphere, but sometimes you need to hush your mouth, get somewhere, and sit down. You need to be quiet until God speaks, and then open your mouth and say what God says. When you're running off at the mouth, you're saying the wrong things, and you're not saying what God says, and he can't agree with you because you're not agreeing with him. I'm just kicking over all kinds of theology this morning. I'm just, just blowing doors off stuff. But I thought, see, there's the problem. You thought. What I want to know is what God say. What's God saying in this matter, in this situation? I remember um, uh, this was many years ago. And Pastor, I'm sure, probably doesn't even remember it. But I came to him concerning a... Uh, a co-worker, not that I was having a problem with, but had a, 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 a medical situation that they were facing with one of their children. And um, I mentioned it to Pastor Davenport, and he said to me, eh, and he said it many times since then in various ways, but he said to me, what is God saying in the situation? Now, the first couple times I heard him say that, my religious mind tried to tell me that what he was asking me was, is it God's will that this person be healed? But I learned that that's not what he was saying. He wasn't saying, is it God's will for them to be healed or does, is God just going to let them be sick and die? Nope. Pastors never said that to me, never taught that. Amen. But what he will ask you by the Holy Spirit is have you heard from God about this situation so that as we pray, we can pray in agreement with what God is saying about the situation. Now, we know from the scriptures and we know that God's will is that we be healed. God's will is what, that we be well. If it was not, then he really invested a whole lot in Jesus and really did Jesus a disservice because Jesus bore our sickness and carried our pains, wounded for our transgressions, bruised for our iniquities. The punishment that was due us was laid on him, and by his stripes we are and were healed. So if he, if he, if he went, let Jesus go through all that and then he's going to pick and choose, you can be healed, but you don't get healed. You can be healed, but I don't want you healed. Then he's a liar to himself. Amen? But what the pastor was saying or trying to show me is that if you will listen to God, if you, will wait pat if you will rest and wait patiently for him, or if that family will rest and wait patiently for him, they can hear what God is saying about the specifics of that matter, and they can speak to it at its heart, at its root, and see a change and a turnaround, and the desire that they would like is to see that person healed and raised up. But hearing from God in the matter, what is God saying about this situation? Not just bombarding. Certainly, we're not bombarding heaven because heaven's not against us. Amen. And not just randomly just throwing stuff just to see what's going to stick. But being precise, being pinpoint. We, sh we, we shotgun prayer. Anybody ever fired weapons? Shotgun, and when it comes out of the muzzle, the burst spreads out like this. 
But God's desiring for us to be rifle prayers. A rifle puts the bead right on the target and goes right to the target and strikes the target. And if you're a good shot, right at the heart. Amen. I worked 30-some years for the Michigan Department of Corrections. And I want to tell you, I'm a good shot. In 30 years, I never failed to qualify on the gun range, both with rifle, shotgun, and handgun. Amen. I can shoot. I ain't bragging, but I'm just telling you. <laughs> Amen. Amen. We used, to, we, used to tell, we used to tell them guys, they'd, they'd get their bumping their gums and running their mouth, and they say, I tell only criminals ain't the only people that carry guns. <laughs> Oops. Okay. So anyway, let's move on. Y- y'all going to think I'm... <laughs> I'm I'm car- I'm not carrying. I just, I just want you to know I'm not carrying. Let's go back to the word. Amen. So I want you to see something here. So as I look at these things in the and it, this is the the second part of this message if you will. Um but I want you to I want you to get this. When you look at many things in the Old Testament and even this psalm, you can look at them as if these are things that you must do in order to be pleasing to God. The New Testament tells us that without faith, it's impossible to please God. So everything that we do, we do by faith, and we do it on the basis of the finished works of Jesus. So I want you to not just in this passage of Scripture, but in many passages of Scripture that you see that talks about characteristics and attributes of godly people. Now remember this, in this 37th Psalm that David wrote, David was an Old Testament man. He was a covenant man, an old covenant man, but he was still not born again. As wise as David was, as victorious as David was, everybody in this room has it over what David had in the old covenant. Presuming that everybody in this room is born again. Because what you have is what David wanted but never had. You have the new birth. You are a new creation in Christ. The attributes and characteristics, hear me now, the attributes and characteristics of God are in your recreated human spirit. Listen to me. The fret not that we were advised to do in the Old Testament or in the 37th Psalms, the fret not is in your recreated spirit. The don't get heated up is in the ability that's in you. The reason why most of us are not further along than we are because we just do not know who we are. One guy minister said it this way, we're always trying to do and trying to be who we already are. We're trying, 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 trying to do better, trying to act better, trying to, trying to, trying to, to live right. But the live right is in your spirit. Yes. Yes. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things are passed away, and all things are become new. And I always quote the 17th verse there, 2 Corinthians 5, with the 18th verse. And all things are of God. All what things? All things of the new creation. We are created in Christ Jesus after God who was created and we're created in righteousness and true holiness, Ephesians 4 tells us. We are cre- what, we, you, what you were created to be and called to do is the likeness and the image of God. That is who you are. Listen, 
It's good to confess that you're a Christian. It's good to say, confess that you're a believer. It's good to be a faithful church member. It's wonderful that you're a tither. All of those things are good. But here's a confession. If you haven't been making this confession, I want you to make a commitment today before the Lord that every single day of your life and early in the day as you go forward in your day, make this confession. I am a new creation in Christ Jesus. Tell yourself, remind yourself, train yourself to think in line with that so that you can begin to draw up out of you who you are. The love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost. You don't have to go get love. You don't have to even, watch me now, you don't even have to try to love. You need to know that the love God, the love creator that made you a love child is down on the inside of you. And the love that you need, you got to draw up out of you. I am a love creature of a love God. Those are the confessions that you make. I'm going, oh, Lord, help me to hold my peace. Oh, Lord. Mm -mm. That's human effort. Rest. And wait patiently. The prayers that Pastor Davenport has been encouraging us to pray, and he says that the prayers that we pray primarily as new creations are prayers of worship and thanksgiving. Father, I thank you that your love's in me. I thank you that I'm possessed by you. I thank you that I open my mouth boldly and speak as I ought to and declare the mysteries of the gospel. I thank you that no corrupt communication comes out of my mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace to the hearers, because that's who I am. That's who I am. That's who he's made me. That's what he's called me to be, created me to be, and called me to do, is to exemplify him. In, in the Proverbs, again, it says that the, um, let not mercy and truth forsake you, bind them about your neck, wear them on the outside, and then it says to put them or settle them in your heart. The word of God has got to be in your heart in, for, in order for it to be manifested in your life. One of the definitions of grace is the divine influence of God on the heart manifesting itself in the life. The, the divine influence of God, the grace of God is on your spirit. And it is manifested in your life to the degree that you yield to what's on the inside of you. Well, you say, I didn't know all that. Then get in the book, my friend. Find out who you are. Amen. I, 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 I enjoy, I read the scriptures cover to cover. I read them, the Bible, through several times during the year. But I concentrate, I put most of my time in the epistles. Most of my time because those are God's love letter to me telling me who I am. And I, I believe I'm a lot like Pastor Davenport. I spend a whole lot of time. Well, in fact, I'll prove it to you a little bit right here. I got one page that's not connected in my Bible. Guess which book this is? <laughs> Ephesians. <laughs> Done turned the page so many times and pulled it right out of the binding. <laughs> Amen. Done marked it up, wrote it up highlighted it up, and I go back over it. I get up in the morning sometime before work, and I read the whole book. It only takes a minute. Stop selling yourself short. I ain't got time. Come on. You got time. Take the time. Take you about maybe 10 minutes or under. Amen. One of my other... One of my other um, um, skills or, or things that I've developed over the years is, and this may or may not work for you, but I read the Bible while I'm praying in tongues. <laughs> Amen. Your mind can do that. <laughs> you say, well, you won't get anything that you're getting. Well, your mind's not praying in tongues. Your spirit is. <laughs> so you edifying your mind and building your spirit at the same time. 
So when you pray in unknown tongues, your, 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 your mind doesn't get edified. Nope, but reading the scriptures edifies my mind. So guess what? I'm going to edify my mind and I'm going to edify my spirit simultaneously. Look out, devil. Here I come. Glory to God. The attributes, the characteristics, and instruction in these verses in Psalm 37 are intrinsic. That means belonging to a thing by its very nature. So when it tells us that we're to fret not, to trust, to delight, to commit and to trust, to rest and to wait, to cease, seek and forsake, these things are intrinsic in us in the new birth. I said a minute ago, David was an old covenant man, and if you, if, and, and, but, he, but David had New Testament sensibilities. He did. But he said, if you read Psalm 32 and if you read Psalm 51, you'll see that what David wanted was the new birth. Yes. I'm going to turn to those real quick. You can jot them down in your notes, but I'm just going to read them to you real quick. In Psalm 32, um, it says, I like to read them out of my Bible because I, if I start quoting them, sometimes I'll, I'll misquote them. David says in Psalm 32, blessed is the man whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. That's Old Testament thinking. But then what does he say in verse 2? Blessed is the man to whom the Lord imputeth not or counts not iniquity. That's New Testament. Because he doesn't count our sins against us because our sins were laid on Jesus. So if I'm in Jesus, there's nothing counting against me. Huh? Old things are passed away. My sins are not covered. They're passed away. They're gone. Because Jesus took them. He took them. Blessed is the man who imputes not iniquity, in whose spirit there is no guile, no deceit. David wanted the new birth. Yes. Psalm 51. Psalm 51. Psalm 51, it says, deliver me from blood guiltiness, O God, verse 14. Thou God of my salvation, and my tongue shall sing aloud of thy righteousness. Well, let me go back. Go back. Excuse me. Verse number 9. Hide not thy face from my sins, and blot out all mine iniquities. Create in me a clean heart. O God, and what? Renew a right spirit. Huh? Within me. Cast me not away from thy presence. And take not thy Holy Spirit from me. You're a new creation. You have the Holy Spirit. David wanted an experience where the Holy Spirit wasn't just coming and going, coming and going, resting on him for a time and then lifting. He wanted the experience of knowing the presence of the God, of God, of the Lord, 24-7. Amen? Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation and uphold me with thy free spirit. David wanted the new birth. David was looking ahead, not really even maybe fully understanding what he was asking for or what he desired. But he knew, I want an experience different than the one I've got right now. David wanted what you got. Glory to God. Going to read these few verses and I'm going to be done. Probably going to finish on time. Shut up. <laughs> and somebody looked at their neighbor and said, I'm so glad. <laughs> we are who we are and therefore we do what we do by the virtues of the new birth. I'm going to say that again. We are who we are and we do what we do by the virtues of the new birth. There ain't no such thing as a self-help book. <laughs> I don't mean to burst your bubble. You need Holy Ghost help. Yourself ain't helping you. Yourself got you in the problem that you're in right now. Yourself got you to where you are. You need Holy Ghost help. You need something that was outside of you but is now from within you but is of a source that you did not create or that you did not make of your own. I'm going to read these verses. I already, I already read 2 Corinthians 5, 17, 18. Ephesians 3 and 20. Listen to this. This is in the Amplified. Now to him 
who by in consequence of the action of his power that is at work within us is able to carry out his purpose and do so super abundantly far and above all that we dare ask or think infinitely beyond our highest prayers, desires, thoughts, hopes, or dreams. But the beginning of that verse says it is the power that is at work within us. Now unto him who is able to exceeding, do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that's at work within us. Look at somebody and say, the power is working in you if you're a new creation. Philippians 2.13 in the Amplified says, not in your own strength, for it is God who is all the while effectively at work in you, energizing and creating in you the power and the desire both to will and to work for his good pleasure and satisfaction and delight. It is God all the while who's working in you, energizing and creating in you both the power and the desire. Yes. The power and the desire come from the work of the Holy Spirit in you. Yes. You want to get some act right, the act right's on the inside of you. Yes. Hallelujah. Ephesians 4.21 if indeed you have heard him and have been taught by him as the truth is in Jesus, that you put off concerning your former conduct, the old man which grows corrupt according to deceitful lust, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind. How is this activated? It's activated by mind renewal. How is the mind renewed? By taking heed to the word. By by uh, putting, setting your thoughts, your affections, your desires on the things above, the things above, the things of the word. And that you put on the new man, which is created according to God in righteousness and true holiness. Everything about your recreated spirit, you have the DNA of God in your spirit. Amen. DNA scientifically, is, are the building blocks for everything. Everything is made up of DNA. Your DNA is righteousness and true holiness. That's why John was able to say, he that is righteous does righteousness even as he is righteous. He that's righteous, that's you, does righteousness, acts of righteousness, works of righteousness, even as he or because he's righteous, you are only able to do righteous acts or do righteousness or be righteous because of the righteous one who lives on the inside of you. Amen. Hallelujah. So don't get heated up unless you're going to heat up like this. Thank you. Thank you, Sister White. There's the title. I wrote it. It's in my notes. You can't read it. It says stay cool. Sister White just said, be cool. So we're going to take that for the message topic. Hallelujah. Stay cool. But the, listen to me. As I go to my seat, as I finish up today, the stay cool is in your spirit. Now, oh, it's, oh. Stay cool is in my spirit. Hey, hallelujah. Hallelujah. This morning as I was, we were getting up around 6.30, amen, um, as I was waking up and I, I, I don't know how it was down here, but there was a wind, wind, man, and I heard it, and the, and the, the siding on the house was popping, you know, it was hitting on the siding on the house, and I said, man, is this another Pentecost or something going on, <laughs> on here? And I said, man, if it sounds like this here, what must they have heard? A sound as of a mighty rushing wind. And then that sound and that wind filled all the house. Woo, we got some experiences to experience in God, folks. We haven't even seen the beginning of it. Glory to God. From glory to 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 glory. How can you be a Christian and be bored? My God, hallelujah. How can you be new, a, cre a new creation and have nothing to do? Right. 
Bye, YouTube. <laughs> Amen. Pastor says we are dismissed. Praise the Lord. Amen.